So hi, can everyone hear me all right now? Sweet. So thanks for coming. I'm Alex Kuklinski. I'm the founder and CEO of Techno FYI. And I'm going to kind of talk to you about best practices for making how-to content and how I'm trying to fix the problem of how-to content uh, today. So that's me. Um, I've been creating how-to content online since 2007. Um, started with a friend of mine asking me how to do something technical and kind of went over her head. So instead of being social and trying to help her in person, I just made a video on YouTube so I didn't have to deal with her, which is probably just my social awkwardness kicking in, but it worked for me pretty well and I started making money off of it, so that's cool. Um, since 2007, I have about 7 million views, uh, 30,000 subscribers, and the content has sometimes been featured on NPR, The World Herald, um, and Gadget, uh, which is pretty awesome. In 2013, I launched Techno FYI. Um, it started off with you know, how-to content on the side, um, but it was really kind of a way to bridge the gap between videos on YouTube and written instructional content online. So I thought if I could offer both of them in the same place, I could you know, make a lot of people happy. Uh, in addition, to try to get people coming back to the site, I also did consumer electronics news and gadget reviews, just because I can't make how-to content every day. Um, Last year, I uh, kind of realized that wasn't going to work just because it's impossible for me to make all that news. Uh, so we tried to focus a lot on how-tos. And actually, right here at Big Omaha, I had Evan Williams, who's the co-founder of Twitter, uh, Kevin Rose, uh, Lauren Woman Powers, and I forgot who the other person was. Uh, but they basically said you're not going to be successful creating news content for the consumer electronics industry uh, here in Omaha. So that was awesome to hear in front of everyone at Big Omaha. So, but it was kind of a wake-up call. It's like I got to move on to something else. And you know, the how-to content I've been making has been pretty successful. So I figured, why don't I just keep doing that? So before I get into kind of you know what I'm doing, I just want to kind of share what I think the best practices are for making how-tos online. First thing is, you should be creating both videos and written instructional content. Reason behind that is a lot of like about 50% of people prefer videos and 50% of people prefer written content. So if you could you know make everyone 100% happy, why not do it? Second thing, be short, sweet, and to the point. There's nothing more annoying than watching a 30-minute video to learn something that was about 30 seconds in the whole video. That's really annoying, and so that's kind of a, a big point. And the third thing, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, is to break your content into bite-sized pieces. Uh, and that's kind of what TechnoFY is going to focus on uh, here in the next couple months. Finally, just three social aspects. I'm socially awkward, so these are just three things that I would recommend. Be personable. Don't be that monotone, you know, Bueller guy, you know. That's annoying. Uh, second thing, be professional. I'm not saying have a suit and tie in your videos, but just use good equipment. Video cameras aren't that expensive now. Um, invest the money in good equipment now, and you'll reap the benefits uh, later on. And finally, be accurate. I keep saying it's really annoying when people do this, but it's really annoying when you watch a 10-minute video and then figure out it's not going to work because it's outdated or they didn't follow steps properly, stuff like that. So just be personable, be professional, and be accurate. So correlating videos and text tutorials. 65% of us are visual learners, so that counts for videos, reading, uh, that's according to the Science uh, Resource Network. And I've, through customer development or customer discovery uh, interviews, really found that that gap is about 50-50, people who prefer videos and people who prefer written content. So really, if you make videos and written content, you're going to make everyone happy. So that's, that's the goal with this. So that being said, what do you think is the average view duration for instructional content on YouTube? Anyone want to take a guess? Two and a half minutes. Ten minutes. Thirty seconds. So what I did was I analyzed the top ten videos that I made last year, and that all together was about 1.04 million views. Analyzed them all, and then saw what the average view duration was, and it was only two minutes and 21 seconds. And most of my videos are five and ten minutes long. So for, from a content creator perspective, why would I waste my time making a 10-minute video when people are only going to watch 22% of that? So on my end, it, it's a lot of wasted time on my part, but also 
people are gonna ask me questions and a lot of the questions I get are from that other part that people aren't watching. So how do you fix this? Well, you gotta break it into bite-sized pieces. Um, right now, there's no available platform that does this effectively that I found. If there is one, please let me know so I don't do this and waste a bunch of money developing this. There, and also, what I found is the how-to sites that exist don't make both videos and written content. They focus on one or the other. Prime example number one is YouTube. We're all familiar with YouTube. It's awesome. Very good at videos. On the left-hand side, you know, basic YouTube uh, viewing experience. Video is awesome, no written content, and it's really not organized in a way that is easy to follow along with. So you have your video, the description. Description is, it's kind of what I use to get around making that written content in a different way. But the problem is, the only formatting options you have are line breaks, and that's not very effective. It's not appealing, and people don't want to read a giant description in YouTube. Also, all the videos right here if you're a YouTube partner, YouTube will take your videos and put them over here. But if you're not, it's just a bunch of random videos. And so if you're making a series, it's really ineffective. There's no way that you can continue watching videos in this series. And then if we look at the playlist system, which I think is pretty cool, but they implement it in a horrible way. The only way you can get this layout on YouTube is if you follow the specific link with the playlist in it. So even if you're making a series, like this video is in, a, is in a playlist on YouTube, but no one watching this video will ever get this unless they're on the YouTube playlist um, thing on YouTube, which people don't search for that. They search for individual videos on YouTube. So you're getting that other thing I showed you uh, right before this. So again, the categorization really isn't there. So eHow. One of my good professor friends absolutely hates eHow, so it's kind of funny <laughs> to make fun of them. Um, eHow makes their own videos, and they have kind of a mixture of community content as well as their own. So with their videos, fine, cool, they have videos, but the written content really isn't there. They just post a video transcript of what they're doing. And that's really ineffective because no one wants to view a script. Like when you go to a movie theater, you're not going to read the whole script. It's easier just to watch the video. So you need to break it down in a way that's, you know, readable by us. And then if you look at the, the curated text, you have to flip through individual paragraphs. And that's a giant pain, especially if the tutorial can be pretty long. So they also don't include videos in that as well. So like I said, they're focusing either on videos or they're focusing on written content, but they're not marrying the two together. The best site that I can think of that does this right now is Instructables. It's a really good DIY site, like if you want to figure out how to make an LED cube or program stuff. It's, it's a really cool site. And I think they do the best job at this because at least they're integrating YouTube videos into the tutorials, but that's totally up to the end user. So chances are when you go to Instructables, it's just one giant video for their topic and then a bunch of steps and it's not categorized very well. So how are we going to solve this? Well, what I want to do is make a standardized approach to both creating and presenting instructional content online through an intuitive and simple template that has a chapter driven viewing platform. So you can take that 10 minute video, break it up into three minute sections and then in the end, the end user can select exactly what they want to learn. And there's always going to be uh, correlating videos and written content in one location. You'll also see that there's that three minute video cap. The reason behind that is, even though the average view duration is two minutes and 21 seconds, if users can actually select what they want to learn, chances are, since they have that interest already, they're going to be more willing to watch the additional 40 seconds of content. Right now we're targeting content creators, so people who publish content on YouTube or Vimeo or Instructables. We've verified that market already, and now what we're doing is looking into educators. So talking to some people at Lincoln, saying, is this something you'd be interested in for your classes? Because what some professors are doing is they're uploading entire lectures, hour-long lectures. And I was looking at their heat map, and all their students, they'll watch it, and then three minutes in, no one views the rest of it until the very end. <laughs> So using this method where you're breaking it up into sections and chapters, you're, al you're allowing the end user to really focus on what exactly they want to learn. Because they might already know something, and they don't want to relearn it. 
So I know this is kind of small on this, but I'm not a graphic designer, so be gentle on this for me. Um, this is the template mock-up that I made. So in the very beginning, you have the tutorial description, so it's really high-level information, so people can search for it on Google or on our platform itself. And then when you go down here, this is one chapter, so it's the introduction to 3D printing. And then underneath it, you have your sections and tutorials. So the tutorials actually reside in the sections. So this particular section here is how to calibrate a 3D printer. So every tutorial under that is going to be about calibrating a printer. So this particular one is how to calibrate an extruder, which is kind of not related to this particularly. But this is what you would be using to create your tutorials. So on the left-hand side, you could upload your video, which has that three-minute video cap, some pretty high-level information about the video. And then this is where you build your written tutorial as well. So it has text formatting options. You can add lists. You can bold, you know, all that other stuff. You can also add images. Everyone likes images and text tutorials. So if they don't want to watch a video, they can at least get the written content and have the images correlating with it. So it, it's a good way to do that. And then you have your step icon. It's a good way for the content creator to say, this is optional. Like It could be a warning. It could be a hint about a particular tutorial. You can also add steps as well. And this is what it would look like, which doesn't turn, turn up too well on this. Um, so this is kind of just a way that people would be able to view the content that you've created. And all of the content would look like this. Uh, it's just a standard way to both create and present that content. So the video would be on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you have your, uh, your chapters. And so this is really hard to see, so I apologize. But the introduction, that's the chapter. And then underneath it, you have your sections. So the sections could be like, what, are, what is 3D printing? Uh, what are the benefits of it? How do I get started? Do you even need a printer to get started? And then you could select where to go from there. Sorry, that didn't turn out too well. Underneath it, so whenever you select one particular tutorial where it shows the video, underneath it would be the text tutorial. So it tells you how long it's going to actually take you to do that particular step. Um, you have all the steps. It's really visually laid out in a positive way. So this way it doesn't lose you. You're not viewing one giant paragraph of text. So I went through the Accelerate Innovation Initiative's Lean Launchpad program over the summer. It was a 10-week program. And through that, like I said, I've validated that there's a need for this in the consumer space. We're still researching it in the education market. Um, obviously, I want to pursue it. That's why I'm here. Um, right now, we're looking for a technical co-founder. So like, we have the vision, but I need, I need a technical co-founder to kind of just explain this is feasible, this isn't feasible, um, someone to bounce ideas off of. Um, some upcoming events that I want to go to. Um, the Omaha Mini Maker Fair would be great for what we're trying to do. Uh, in particular because they are so passionate, the DIY community is so passionate about what they're doing that they're, they're probably going to be the most willing to jump into a platform like this that's producing both those types of content. I'd also like to present at One Million Cups in the Omaha Maker Group if you guys are familiar with those uh, groups and organizations. So, so that's it. Um, if you are interested in something like this, I'm trying to do more customer interviews, uh, just trying to validate more what I'm doing. Uh, so you can email me at alex at technofyi.com um, or follow me on Twitter. So.